And you're very welcome along to the wider view this Friday, the 5th of June. We're with you right up until half past two. We have a jam-packed programme as always. Some of the items coming up, we're going to be speaking about hair coursing in just a few moments. We'll be going to the Holy Family School in Cathill at a quarter to two or so. At about two o'clock, we'll be hearing more about suicide awareness talks coming up in Cavan next week. We'll be hearing about efforts also in the town uh, from So Sad in Cavan and the need your help uh, with donations on Monday and Tuesday. And I'm talking about clothes, items, handbags, shoes, you name it, and the charity will ve- benefit uh, financially come Wednesday. We'll explain more about that. We'll be going to Kinlacroft then to tell you some of the items on offer tomorrow in the auction. They're on view as we speak today from 11am this morning. But first up, documents obtained under the Freedom of Information reveals evidence of coursing cruelty in Cavan. That's according to the Irish Council Against Bloodsport, who have released their new coursing cruelty catalogue report, which analyses documents relating to the to 2014 to 2015 coursing season. According to the council, the report confirms that the suffering continues for hares which are being used as live bait in the blood sport. Joining us on the line this afternoon, we have Aideen Urell, who is the spokesperson uh, for the Irish Council Against Blood Sport. I suppose good afternoon to you firstly, Aideen. Uh, Good afternoon, Gillian. All right. Tell us about this new coursing cruelty catalogue um, that you have out. Yeah, well, actually, it comes out every year, and it has been coming out since for free, for a decade almost. But um, every year after the coursing season has ended, the hair coursing season, we apply to the National Park and My Life Service under the Freedom of Information Act, looking for uh, act, looking for reports of hair coursing meetings that have been held around the country, because the rangers attend a fraction of them; they monitor some of them. And the courses themselves have to make returns of various things that happened at coursing meetings, like the number of hares that were injured and killed. They have to make those returns. Okay. So we we apply for copies of those. And, right. And um, this is where the figures, today's figures are coming from. That's right, yes. And um, anyway, uh, in your area, Cavan Dun, it's called the Cavan Dungannon meeting, because Dungannon... Uh, from the north of Ireland to come down to the south of Ireland to, to have their coursing meeting because hair coursing is outlawed in Northern Ireland. It's banned actually in Northern Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, and we're the last uh, we're the last country in these islands to be hosting this, to be allowing this barbaric blood sport to go on. It's so like, it's, it's not illegal here. What you're saying, it's not it illegal. Is, it is legal here. In well, that's what I'm saying. It's not here. illegal. Oh, not legal, yes. Yeah. And the licence to net hairs is given by the Minister for Arts and Heritage, um, Heather Humphreys. And so they, that minister automatically issues that licence every year, yes, is it? Yes, yeah. And we've been appealing for the last number of years for her not to give the licence. And what has she said? Oh, um, I'm afraid we're, we're having a, a difficulty getting her to answer us, really. Um, in fact... We were trying to get a meeting with her, and she did promise in the doll that she would give us a meeting, but unfortunately, as to date, we have had nothing. We've heard nothing about a meeting. Okay. We're going to keep on trying. For anyone out there, Aideen, that maybe is not familiar with hair coursing, would you explain the practice to us? Well, what happens is that uh, under the, the um, My Life Act, the minister gives a licence for hairs to be taken from the wild, and they're taken up in net. There's about 5,000 every year taken. Uh, a, a, a coursing club would take about an average of 60 to 80 hares. Uh, they would go out and they would, um, with nets, and they would trap the hares in the nets. Okay. And this in itself is very cruel and very stressful for hares. They're gathered up in these nets and then they're put in boxes and they're brought to the coursing club's um, compound where they're kept for about six weeks. And they're, they're so-called trained to run up an area the size of a football field. Uh, um, they run up the area, and there's an escape area provided for them. But the, the hares are being terrorised. They're fed on natural food, not, not unlike what they would get in the wild. And many of them do get stress-related illnesses, and they die while in captivity. Um, on the day of coursing, they're forced to run 
uh, in front of two greyhounds. It's really live bait. They're used as live bait. And I understand, uh, just from doing a bit of research on this, that the, the dogs in this, I'm not, I'm not um, saying this is okay, but they're, they're meant to wear muzzles. Is yes, that right? Yes, wear muzzles. Uh, that, that's come in in 1993 after the bill to ban coursing to, uh, Deputy Tony Gregory who's sadly deceased now but he brought in a private member's bill to ban hair coursing and this is what the result of it was they were forced to muzzle so that the hands couldn't tear the hairs apart which they had been doing they just I see I saw it myself and I stood at coursing meetings helplessly watching that but now what's happening is you can a uh, greyhound is, is coming at about 40 miles an hour. They can reach speeds of, of that. And the little hare is, is running in front. And when they, sometimes they hit the hare and turn it over. And th- that's when the hare gets pinned down. And sometimes they get uh, very badly injured and they die from their injuries. They're so badly injured, having been hit at that speed, that they, they uh, die from their injuries. And actually in Cavan, um the Cavan Dungannon meeting, uh, three hairs required assistance. This is what the coursing club call being hit by the dogs and being pinned. And, and do we know if those hairs died? Hmm? Do we know if they died? Yeah, three were examined by a vet and the courses state that one hair died after, after it hit a post while being reboxed for release. I mean, it hit, I don't know how it hit a post. Maybe it ran into the post. I was just in terror and blind terror while, be, while being chased by the greyhounds. But um, every year there are injuries and every year there are kills and, you know, every single hare is being traumatised. Every hare is running for its life and it's traumatised and terrorised. You mentioned there previously you have been at, at coursing meetings. Tell us, how, how did you uh, did you go there undercover or were you involved in it before? Well, more or less. I mean, we, we have gone there and, in fact, we were dragged out, literally. They don't want any video footage getting out. We have gotten video footage in various venues and they don't like that. They don't like their cruelty to be exposed to the world. And, and tell us, it. so the only one that can change this, in your opinion, is, is the minister, really? Well, the minister, but really, uh, the government as a whole, uh, all our, the, the politicians, the legislators, but they're all turning a blind eye. Apart from uh, a number of TDs who support us, uh, Claire Daly, TD, and Maureen O'Sullivan, they're great supporters of ours, and other, pe- other independents. But generally, the people in parties, uh, you know, turn a blind eye they you know run for cover when it's mentioned they don't want to talk to you they don't answer our emails they they if you meet them they'll all tell you that it's cruel and it should be banned but they're not going to they're not going to take a risk on on this because after all hares are on the animals and they don't to them they don't matter even though the hare the irish hare is a highly protected species Okay. Imagine that. In, um, it's categorised as a protected... And what's, just to be fair to the groups that are, um, I suppose, engaging in this sort of activity, what, what's their justification for it? Um, tradition. And they've always been doing it. And, you know, they like to see... They like to course greyhounds using a live, a live lure because it provides a huge amount of excitement for them. Now, they, they can do this with mechanical lure coursing, with, and we've seen it in action, and we've filmed it, and it's up on YouTube uh, for everyone to see. It was filmed in Listry and Killarney, and the, the hounds were enthusiastically following the lure, the mechanical lure. The courses said that it'll only follow the me- mechanical lure for a while and then lose interest. But that's not true, because every we stayed there for the day, and we watched all the greyhounds running after the lure. And it's just like any dog... If you throw something for it, it'll run after it. It's delighted to run after it. So you're, you're, the you're, of the dog. you're on the air now on the local radio station off the Minister for Arts. She may be listening today. What would you say to her? I'd, I would ask her and appeal to her to please stop giving a licence for the taking of these vulnerable, timid wild animals out of, the, out of their natural habitat to be used in a, such a cruel and barbaric way, really. You know, it doesn't, it has no place in a civilised society, that kind of thing. This is something that dates back to the Roman amphitheatres. In fact, the Romans brought hair coursing to Britain, 
and the British brought it here. And they've now banned it in Britain, and we're left doing it. I mean, it's ironic, really. All right, Aideen Urell there from the Irish Council Against Blood Sports there. 87 is our text line number uh, this afternoon if you have you on the same. Now I have to say out of the report, Cavan wasn't the worst and as um, Espos Aideen pointed out there, people, um, according to her, come from Dungannon down to Cavan uh, to practice in this activity that is hair coursing. 87 that text line number again.